starting as early as the mid 19th century with people like Charles Fourier and Flora Tristan in France and Henri Saint-Simon, who really talked about the ways in which socialism, utopian socialism in their formulation, could not really come to fruition without also a concomitant commitment to women's emancipation. And that if you go back and you look at some of these early socialist theories, in fact, they were very much concerned with the question, women's question as well as with the emancipation of workers and the freedom from the proletariat and the end of exploitation. That the end of the exploitation in the family was as important a goal as the end of exploitation of workers. And then you have later uh, theorists like August Bebel and uh, Friedrich Engels and Clara Zetkin and Alexander Kollontai in, in, in the Soviet Union and before the Soviet Union really talking about sexuality and uh, women's economic independence and the ways in which the commodification of women's sexuality is part of capitalism. And that once you overthrew capitalism, you would have uh, a sort of new kind of woman, right? The woman of the future, Bebel talks about in his book, Women and Socialism. So these were theoretical claims and I'm a social scientist. And so one of the things that I thought was really interesting was what happened to women in Eastern Europe after 1989 or 91, if you were in the Soviet Union, when you introduced capitalism. So as a social scientist, I, want, I was thinking, if I wanted to test these theories about the impact of economic systems on women's lives, you, you, know, you, could, do, you could imagine a kind of double blind study or whatever, you took a group of women and you raised them under capitalism and you took a group of women and you raised them under some kind of ideal form of socialism. And then you um, came up with some kind of rubric and you measured the self-reported life satisfaction or whatever sexual satisfaction, what happiness, however you wanted to um, measure it. But of course you can't do that study because it's unethical. Like an IRB board wouldn't let you have babies to grow up in this way. So what you look for as a social scientist is a natural experiment. And I think what's really fascinating about Eastern Europe after 89 or 91 is that it provided a natural empirical experiment, especially in a place like Germany, which was divided during the Cold War, where you had one population of Germans on one side of the wall and another populations of Germans on the other side of the wall, growing up under two economic systems. And then lo and behold, in 1990, they come back together. And social scientists just had a field day on this, right? They asked them all sorts of questions about how the economic system right. changed their lives in a variety of different ways. And so the claim of the book is actually quite simple. It's that, in fact, socialism as and, and people are going to um, debate about what that word actually means, because some people call it state socialism, others call it state capitalism, whatever it was that they had in Eastern Europe, communism before 89 or 91 in the Soviet Union was in fact better for women's lives on a variety of different rubrics than capitalism in the West. And I even take that argument a step further and I say that because of the commitment to women's emancipation that these state socialist countries in Eastern Europe had during the Cold War between 1917 and 1991 in the Soviet Union and between 45 and 89 in Eastern Europe, their commitment to women's rights actually ended up putting pressure on Western countries to kind of step up their game when it came to women's rights. So it's a very empirically based argument. A lot of people who pick up the book are actually, it kind of has this titillating title, which of course the publisher chose. But in fact, um, it is a very seriously empirically rich and grounded book that really tries to grapple with the data that is available to us. And again, I understand that there are some methodological questions, but there is data available to us that shows us that not only were women's lives in some respects much better behind the quote unquote iron curtain during the Cold War, but that after 89 and 91, their lives rapidly deteriorated with the introduction of free markets.